you don't want to get a walk-in bathtub because it takes too long to fill a walk-in bathtub up. You get cold and it's miserable and you're not going to sit there 10-15 minutes waiting for that tub to fill up. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that over the past 20 years and quite frankly, sadly, there's some truth to that. But the, the reason that bathers are having that experience with a walk-in bathtub is because of the quality of the plumbing and equipment that is being installed on their tub. And again, let's keep in mind some of the best marketers out there are selling the worst products. Our plumbing systems in the United States are primarily almost always half-inch supply lines going in to a tub or a shower area. So if I'm one of these mass media, high volume walk-in tub companies, and, I, and you can look at their pictures, they're all gonna put these five piece, half inch valves on the deck of the tub. So I have a hot and a cold. I mix the temperature uh, uh, right on the deck of the tub. If I want to uh, run the shower, I have a mechanical diverter that I use. Well, I'll tell you right now, this violates the ADA because the ADA requires that every source of water, which means your filler spout and your handheld wand or your shower, uh, need to be controlled separately. So that means no diverters. And two, they both need to be thermostatically protected. So how do we address this issue? We have three different levels and any mix and match between these that we can offer uh, to our clients to help address this issue. Number one, we size up to three quarter inch in, in the tub surround. Now I've had plumbers tell me, what are you talking about? You got a half inch supply line, that's not gonna improve anything. Well, actually it does. It's the valves, if you look at these pictures, you can see that our valves in the US uh, standard valves are constricted. They may be half, half inch couplers, but they're constricted down to almost a quarter of an inch on the inside. And we get a lot of misinformation because we have these manufacturers that, that will tell us, oh, it's a three quarter inch valve, when in reality the coupler may be three quarter inch, but the valve flow through itself is restricted and much smaller than that. So the first thing we want to do is upsize the lines in the tub and make sure that every valve and junction point in the system is at least three quarters of an inch. What that's going to do, it's going to re reduce the pressure because it's larger and increase the volume. And if we do this, then we can maximize your water flow into your tub, which now we're, we're dealing with your water pressure and your supply system. But you'll know if you use a system like we recommend that you're getting the maximum water flow into your tub. And generally speaking, we can expect to boost up the flow rate into the tub by about 30% by increasing the diameter all the way through the flow system. Okay, so let's start now with where we install these valves. The Americans with Disabilities Act again says every source of water needs to have its own control. And it also says something very interesting. It says that these controls should be within 30 inches of the back wall and next to the bather. So it doesn't matter whether it's a tub or a shower, we should never be reaching past our feet to try to adjust the valves and the controls according to the ADA. They should all be next to the bather. And this is also a key feature for caregiving later in life. So let's keep that in mind too. So the first thing we can do is we, we can upsize your system to three quarter inch. We can put high quality three quarter inch valves on the deck of the tub. We can plumb it with the diverter and the handheld shower on the deck of the tub. That is the least expensive way to go. And if you look at the pictures in the marketplace of walk-in bathtubs, that's pretty much what you're gonna see every time. What we do in our, we've, we've trademarked what we call the secure temp valve to meet the ADA guidelines. This is a very high-end type T thermostatic mixing valve. Uh, type T means it's a true thermostatic valve, which means it's temperature driven, not pressure driven. Most of the valves we use in the United States, if you go down to Home Depot and they're called anti-scald or whatever, these are primarily pressure balance, which means if the water pressure, hot or cold, one side or the other, fluctuates, this mechanical valve attempts to adjust that to keep it you know, close to the temperature it was set at. Um, better than nothing, but there can be a wide fluctuation of temperature in those kind of valves, so not always safe. A type T type valve is is a much more expensive valve and it will first of all shut the flow off if it hits a scald level 
But the most important function on a day-to-day -day basis is it will not let the water temperature fluctuate more than a half a degree one way or the other. Now that's our secure tip. There are a lot of different quality levels of these valves, uh, but we want to go to the very highest and, and most effective. When I put a rapid flow three-quarter inch type T thermostatic mixing valve hard plumbed in the wall in this system, that now permits me to accomplish the goal of separating the flow from the filler system in the shower. I run all the hot and cold through this valve. It comes out and we can tee it because this valve will deliver 19 gallons a minute of temped water. I tee one side of that to the control valve that could have been a hot before and that'll turn on the filler spout. I, I flow the other side to the other control valve which might have been the old cold valve and that one turns on the handheld wand or the shower system. So now the control is separated. We've met the ADA guideline and both the shower and the filler system are thermostatically protected. This also means that we have a couple of more options here. All right, so I can put the, the secure temp thermostatic mixing valve. As you can see, I can put it on the head wall. I can put it on the back wall. We can install ADA shower systems that are hard plumbed. Again, I, I think everything in your system should be hard plumbed, the, meaning copper or PEX, something that is not a flexible uh, connector within the system, especially if it's under the tub. Now your handheld wand on the outside of the tub, that's a different story. It's okay to use a flexible hose as long as it's exposed because it's easily replaced if you do create uh, or develop a leak at some point over time. Um, so our deluxe level will put the thermostatic mixing valve in the wall, head wall or side wall, depending on the install, and we'll use the hot and cold flow valves as gate valves to control wh where the water goes. Our custom level, which is the highest level, we now take, and you can see here in the picture, these interior diameter three-quarter inch. These valves will flow 20 gallons a minute each. They're, they're the largest flow valves in the industry for residential use. And we plumb those next to the thermostatic mixing valve, as you can see. Why do we do this? We do this because Number one, the ADA guidelines says these controls need to be next to the bather. Now everything is next to the bather. We can put the handheld shower on an ADA compliant slider bar next to the bather. Total control over the process, easy access. Um, so why would you invest in these different levels of, of valving on a tub? The basic level, you go there if you're on a budget, you can't afford the higher levels. If you can afford the higher levels, I definitely recommend that you consider investing in them. So why would you do this? What's the point? There are three reasons that you'd want to consider in investing in either the, the deluxe mid-level or the custom level with everything on the back, back wall. First is safety, of course. We're trying to create the most safe environment possible for every one of our customers. The second is when I properly install these valves based on the individual customer's needs and abilities, I'm going to enhance their ability to bathe independently for as long as possible. And as an example, my dad, as you may or may not know, made it to 102 and my father was living independently until his very last day. He passed in his own home. But my dad at 102 could bathe himself independently. Why? he could manage this process because of the way we had designed his bathing environment. But at 102, he was getting to the point where, you know, we realized in, in the near future, we might need to bring somebody in to help him a little bit with that bathing process. The key is if he couldn't bathe himself independently, then that's when many people are forced into nursing homes. So again, the three reasons, one is safety. Two is to increase and lengthen the amount of time that an individual can bathe independently for as long as possibly possible hopefully like my dad it'd be their entire lives and third is design the environment now for caregiving all right I hope that makes sense and if we do this our standard tubs are going to fill in three to five minutes we'll talk about the draining process in another video but they're going to drain in three to five minutes and this is very comfortable for people nobody's ever complained about this but the key is 
These negative complaints and horror stories that you hear about are because what companies are selling people. It's not inherent to the fact that it's a walk-in tub that you've got to have these problems, okay? I hope that helps. Take care. I love you all. We love questions, so call with anything. Thanks.